Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the rod shop. Today, we're going to finish the voodoo rod, so y'all stick around. Okay, guys, we're going to do a couple things today. In the last video, I promised you that I would show you how to get a really flat, professional-looking finish on your guide wraps, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. But the first thing we need to do is balance this rod. It's all of the guides are on. I've got first coat of epoxy on some of the wraps. I've got CP Extra on the guide wraps. Um, so the weight is pretty much what the weight is going to be. Now I don't always wait until this late in a rod build to balance, but I did this one. I just wasn't sure. It was the first time I built on this blank. So, and it's just a little tip heavy for my liking. So what I'm going to do is I'll get my stand here and I'll try to figure out where the actual balance point for this rod is as it stands. And it's, it's probably six inches in front of, maybe seven inches in front of the reel seat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bury a quarter ounce lead in the butt of this rod, which is going to move the balance point about four inches back to where we're just a little bit ahead of the reel seat. And it's going to make this rod feel extremely light in your hand as you fish it. It's going to add obviously a quarter ounce to the overall weight of the rod. But the apparent weight in your hand is way more important to me than what it weighs if you stand it up on a scale. Just my opinion, but I fish my rods a lot. So, and this is the feedback I get from my clients is they love the way they feel. They don't care how much they actually weigh. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up a little bit of 10 minute UB40 quick bond so we can bury this quarter ounce weight in the butt of the rod and then we'll and then we'll put the butt cap on and we're not going to need that much epoxy so I'm going to about that much of the white the resin part we'll do the same amount maybe of the hardener part which is the pink and then we'll mix that real quick and we'll get started all right we got that mixed I want to make up a little bit of a tape ball here that I want to be able to stuff inside the blank. Okay, that'll work. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a liberal amount of epoxy in the butt of the blank itself. Now I'll take my tape ball and I'll stuff that in. And then another bit of epoxy and what this does is it ensures that you get a solid glue up of this weight because I have had one come loose and rattle after the fact in fact it was it was Nathan's he had it start rattling and I tried to figure out a way to keep it from happening again and this is how we do that so now it's buried in there pretty good last little bit of epoxy behind the weight and on the tenon just a little bit don't need a lot here we got the tenon wet and I'll put a little bit in the cap the EVA butt cap and just get that wet with epoxy okay last thing you're going to do is you're just going to spin as you go and a little bit of glue 
push out. So I'm going to take a paper towel, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to take some of that excess off. And I'm going to push it back together again, turning as I go. And I still have a little bit there, but we'll wipe that off from the outside. And now you have your butt cap glued on. Do still we need to clean up all right get the final residue off of it now what I like to do is take some half inch tape and I'm just going to use the half inch tape to hold pressure on it play nicely hold a little pressure on the cap I'll stand it in the corner for about 10 minutes and let that epoxy cure and we'll be back to start with the finish work all right guys we're back I put two labels on I put the FDX custom rod label on and then the blank information label on and both of those are in front of the reel seat in front of the hook keeper um, there will be one more video and it will be after the raffle and i'm going to put the final label on back here in the split grip and give the winner the option of personalizing this rod so let's talk about flat flat super professional looking epoxy work now this technique can mean the difference between your rods looking like an average rod or looking like a very professional rod now i did not figure this out on my own i told you guys in the past i had a couple really experienced rod builders back in the early 2000s they kind of took me under their wing and taught me some of the tricks to the trade this is one of the most important ones as far as the way your rod looks when you're done now Let's talk about the very first coat of epoxy. And just like any time you're doing epoxy, I use the Voodoo Diamond 2, which is a medium build epoxy. Um, it gives me the most consistent results. I've been using it for about a decade now. And I don't have any reason to change the other flex coat and you know, the CRB stuff. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I just I prefer to use this. So I'm going to pull with my syringe three cc's of the part A, or is it, sorry, part B, the white cap. And then I'm going to pull three cc's of the part A, which is the black cap. And I have my syringes marked. So I don't mix up syringes. If you do that, you only do it once and that syringe will never work again. Ask me how I know that. Um, so I'm pulling three cc's of that. Alright, so now we have part B and part A in the mixing cup. Time starts now. I'm going to do about three minutes of mixing with a stick very carefully not to introduce a lot of bubbles to it so we'll get started with our clock here now while I'm mixing this I've had a couple questions come up in the comments and I apologize I've, I've got a nasty head cold and I'm on medication and so I may sound a little funny today but I've had some questions and one of those was about 
rod designs. And so what I have decided to do, as soon as we're done with this rod, I'm going to start a new series of videos that are basically FDX rod recipes. And so I will teach you how I design rods and put pieces together and we'll do uh, medium light. Um, could be used for panfish or just, you know, light spinning. Uh, we'll do a medium heavy uh, seven footer that could be your basic generic rod. It will catch anything. The medium heavy fast seven footer is probably the most versatile rod you can put on your boat or fish with. And then I have a brand new design frog rod, which I've got the prototype sitting over there, almost done. Um, you'll notice that the on deck bench is getting filled up again. I've got I've got seven over there that I got to get out. I've got about nine more that I got to get started. And being sick for the last two weeks has not helped that. Plus, I still have a real job. Sometimes I have to play construction company owner, and I've been doing a lot of that this week, but. So I'm going to start with FDX rod recipes and you guys put down in the comments below which ones you want to see first. The one I'm the most excited about is that prototype frog rod. It's a 7.3 medium or it's a 7.3 heavy fast and it's going to do battle tomorrow morning on Lake Toho with my high school team. We're going to go do some practicing for our upcoming tournament. So we've been mixing this about three minutes now and what I like to do is you can either use the little tin foil cups that you can get from rod, rod building supply houses or just take a paper plate and some aluminum foil. What you want to do is spread this epoxy out. Now that all the streaks are gone out of it, it's mixed. I've got some bubbles in it. Here's how you get the bubbles out. The easiest way to do that is just to pour it on a flat. Like I said, this is a small paper plate with some aluminum foil on it. I'll throw the aluminum foil away. Keep using the paper, keep using the same paper plate. Alright, we've got it out. I'll reuse my stick and throw in my cup away. Now I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. This is just how I do it. And I'm gonna throw some heat on it just for a second to get it to thin and let it release a lot of the bubbles. Okay, now we've got most of the bubbles out. We're gonna take a brush and make sure, fan your brush out and make sure you don't have any extraneous brush hairs because those will be a pain. Now, how you get these beautiful flat finishes is very simple. We'll start here with the, uh, the hook keeper. What you wanna do, you're gonna load your brush and you're just gonna kinda pile it on. Now it will soak in the threads it's not going to soak into these because I've already used the CP Extra on these threads. And that gets a lot of the air out of the thread itself and what's trapped underneath it, which is one cause of, one, which is your major cause of bubbles in your finish. So I'm going to just coat that on there. And then I'm going to cover my, my label area here. I'll go outside of where I want the label to stop and I'll just put a band on it and then I'm going to fill in here over my labels and I'm putting it on pretty heavy but it's not going to stay heavy and I'll show you that in a minute. Let's get it coated. Now I'm just spreading it out down the blank in my label area. And see, it's going to start dripping back off. I've got it on very heavy. And there's my band. To start taking some of it off now. Now I'm going to brush down the blank, taking this extra off and spreading it even. 
over the label area. And take the excess off my brush and I'm going to pick up at my trim band I put on here, my little band I put in of epoxy and I'm going to bring it back towards the middle. Now what I will do next is I'm going to let this sit for a bit to where it's going to want to drip, which is fine. Right now I don't care about drips. Now let's go down here to the stripper guide. And this is where this will be a little easier to see how I get this flat. So I'm going to coat this thread work very heavy. And then, like I said, this has got CP extra on it already, so it's not going to soak in like non coated epoxy wood. Okay, now here's the secret. Clean your brush and you want to peel off as much as possible. After it's soaked into your thread work, you want to take as much off of it as you can. Take it back down to where it is just wet. Okay, we're going to go back here and do this to this, the same way. I'm going to take it off of the hook keeper thread to where it is just wet. I'm going to go ahead and coat the rest of these very quickly so y'all hang in there for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to put it in the dryer, put it in your regular single dryer if you've got one, or I put it in my, uh, in dry mode in my power wrapper here. Now it's time for heat. Not a lot of heat. You just want to get it where it's running a little easier. So I'm going to take my flame thrower here and I keep my hand behind where I'm working so I know exactly how much heat I'm putting on here. Okay, last touch. This is very flat now and turning beautifully. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, I would imagine, but where my little trim band was with the epoxy, I'm gonna neaten this edge up. And the way you do that is just a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel, fold a nice straight line and what you're going to do is you're going to slide into it here and just let it peel off and then I'm going to fold it and I'm going back into the same spot now you have a perfectly neat edge everything is flat you know there are a few tag ends sticking through um, which is fine before I get to my next coat of epoxy, my last coat of epoxy. I will go in there with a razor blade, trim the little tag ends off, any little bubbles that show up, and then when we do the final label and the final epoxy, then this rod will be done. Anyway guys, look for the new series on the rod recipes. I hope that's going to answer a bunch of questions. And then I've got a repair video that one of you guys did with some coaching from me, sent me a bunch of pictures. I'm going to walk you through how a repair was made in some marbled epoxy ramp that bubbled up on him and he made a beautiful repair on it. I'll explain that to you, but this rod's almost done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.